Welcome to another edition of the Sales and Marketing Power Hour with your host, Carol Morgan with Denim Marketing and Kimberly Mackey with New Home Solutions Consulting. So, uh, Carol, you want to kick it off and talk about uh, what you do and, in, you know, introduce yourself. Well, Tell us this, whatever's going on in your world you want to share. Right. This week, I'm a superintendent of construction for my own house. It is a hot mess around here. So hopefully, fingers crossed, all of them, I think I can cross. I don't know, maybe not. Yeah, there you go. All my fingers crossed. Hopefully, it'll stay quiet. I have had um, all the windows in my house replaced. And so <laughs> they're painting today. And we're still missing some trim. Y'all know how that goes. They, they sent the right trim. And they sent the right back bend profile, back band profile, but the wrong depth. So anyway, so in between running a crazy construction project, I run Denim Marketing, um, Atlanta-based. We do everything related to content. So most of what we do is public relations, social media, blogging, email marketing, campaigns, you know, a little bit of advertising on Facebook and Instagram. And uh, we just have a great time. We try to make uh, it all fun for our clients and fun for their buyers. So... If you need any help, give me a shout. Well, we all are probably going to need some help now that the market's shifting on us a bit. So (laughs) they needed to stop marketing homes and saving all that money are quickly realizing, oh, SHIT, better better figure out how to advertise and market again. So you're probably going to get real busy. So we actually have stayed really busy, Chris, and um, my phone continues to ring. So yeah, so if you think you're going to need help, call sooner than later, because we'll see, we might become full. She, she yeah. just totally threw out the urgency clothes on everybody on here. And she's not even, that's a right. I not, and I'm I not even a salesperson, but I am a salesperson, right? I own my own business. Are. So I'm a salesperson. We are all salespeople. We're all salespeople. We absolutely are. So uh, for those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Kimberly Mackey. My company is New Home Solutions Consulting. And for the most part, uh, I am a management consultant. I say that because I also do training and I speak as well, but Primarily, I'm a management consultant. And so for builders who are growing or right now making sure that the growth that they have accomplished over the past couple of years is sustained, uh, I come in and I work with them and I make sure all the systems and the parts and the pieces all work together so that sales is the engine that drives the train rather than running it off the tracks, So, uh, which does happen. So we make sure you're profitable and uh, we make sure most importantly that you can plan. So even flow, um, not not just even flow starts and closings, but we also focus on those even flow sales. So uh, give me a call if I can help you. And of course, uh, all of the contact information will be right here. So in in, uh, when you get the video, so be easy to find us all. And then without further ado, Mr. Chris Hartley is joining us today. Chris is my buddy, we go back a ways. And we actually had a trial by fire as we were getting to know each other because we did a master session for IBS. So the International Builder Show, if you've never been to a master session, they're three hours of crazy intensity. Yeah, if you ever want to get to know somebody well, have to do a three hour presentation with them in front of several hundred people. You get to know pretty quickly if if they're the real (laughs) deal or not and who the slacker is. And, you know, fortunately for us, because we had Will Duderstadt with us, we didn't have any slackers. Um, slackers. As as we've joked, because we do speak a lot at IBS and you do get paired with people. um, You know, I think high school, when they pair you with people and they try to get you accustomed to different personality types, I I think it's a pre-warning what real life is going to be like, because there's always that person that says they're going to do a lot of stuff that never really does anything that shows up to IBS and is ready, (laughs) ready to speak and and run with it. And you're like, you haven't been around the whole time and we're not going to say names, but you know, you know who they are. So we're just going to, but luckily Kimberly was not one of those people. You're going to say, but none of them are on this call. No, no, none of them are on this call. No, (laughs) you do not want to see how the sausage was made on that particular presentation, as Will says, so. (laughs) All right, Chris, tell us about yourself and uh, and what you're doing these days. Yeah, so my name is Chris Hartley. I'm the Vice President of Sales for K. Hovnanian Homes in Dallas, Fort Worth. And I'm very blessed to work for a large national home builder that is 1,000% okay with me doing things like this because most builders have uh, heartburn when they have people within their organization that kind of step out and um, 
do their do their thing and speak publicly. So I'm very blessed that I have an organization that not only allows it, but encourages it. So uh, thank you to Kayhawk for that. The dad of two little girls, three-year-old and a six-year-old. Um, I recently completed an Ironman in November. I have a full marathon this weekend in Salt Lake City, doing a children's series book that will start social media in May, which is funny because if anybody knows me, I am anti-Facebook. I've never had a Facebook account. And the PR company is like, you need Facebook, you need Instagram. And I said, we need somebody to be hired for that because I'm not going to touch either one of those. Um, but but that, that will be going live social in May. And then the book will actually be out, um, the first book, because it is a series and hopefully an ongoing series come out in June. So I'm super, super excited about that. Won't tell you the full details on it because I'm still working with the lawyers on trademarking it, trademarking it and copywriting everything. But it's going to be awesome. So you're going to have to jump on for that. So. As you can see, Chris doesn't have enough to do. Yeah, I like to stay busy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. I don't know when you sleep. So, uh, and are you prepared for the altitude change for no. Salt Lake? No, no, no. I ran into a neighbor this morning and she and she's a runner and she just completed a, a race and she did phenomenally well. And she's like, how have you been training for uh, the altitude change? Because it's about 5,000 feet and Dallas is at 450 feet. I said, well, I haven't. And I said, so I'm just looking to finish. I'm not looking for a personal best or anything like that. I'm just going for the experience and run in a beautiful place. But I checked the weather this morning. It's supposed to be raining in like 30 some degrees. So it's going to be a cold one, but it'll be fun because I'm, I'm doing this with actually a lot of industry people, um, which has been great. A lot of people kind of followed me along the way and said, hey, we would love to do a marathon with you if, if you would do one. So uh, Ed Carter, Lonnie Main, Kevin Karshner, um, we are all doing it together in, in Salt Lake. So it's going to be great. That's awesome. So I, I get a nosebleed when I go to Dallas, so where I was a few weeks ago. So, cause I'm at 34 feet above sea level. <laughs> yeah. It'd be different, different for you for sure. Yes. Yes, definitely. So let's kick this off and let's, uh, Chris has been doing the reason that Carol and I asked Chris to, to join us today is because of course we are talking about making movie stars out of your camera shy team. And Chris has been doing videos since before videos were cool before they were all the rage. So that's, the, you've you've also jumped in. You've been a pretty early adapter of a lot of disruptive technologies. So, can you kind of walk us through that and prepare everybody about your mindset on the on yeah, these things? For sure. And you know, it's funny because I get asked this question a lot, and I got to give credit where credit is due, and that's to our good friend Kevin Oakley with Do You Convert. Um, I had been working with Kevin for, gosh, I've known him about fifteen years, and he was always very adamant about when you set your budget up every year, you set up a research budget. You take 10% of your budget and you put it aside for research. And what that is, is it's a uh, monetary amount that if something cool comes up, you just simply pull your budget from the research budget and you get to do it rather than what most VPs of sales and marketing do, which is they go to the division president or the owner of the company and say, Hey, there's this really new technology. Can I try it out? And the first thing they say is, well, how much is it? And then you tell them they fall over. They don't see the value. And then they say, um, put it in your budget for next year. And then you're waiting an entire year before you get to do it. Well, if you put a research budget into place and you already have money aside, then you have real life dollars sitting there that you can get to explore and do things. So kind of built a name for the company I was with, which was a private label home builder that sold uh, to a national home builder in 2018. But when the word got out that my company had dollars set aside every year to do cool stuff, the cool people would follow us and find us and say, hey, we have this new technology. Can we try it with you? And we'll give it to you at a discounted rate. And then if it works, because you have such a loud mouth when you talk about it, and if it doesn't work, maybe you don't even mention that we even talked. Um, Cause I will never say anything negative about any company, right? It's just, I'll give them positive feedback and they can make it better, but it really allowed us to do really cool things. So for instance, unassisted entry, we were doing unassisted entry five years before COVID ever even happened. Right. I mean, that was one of those things where we were just seeing how people were, were shopping and where mm -hmm. I got that idea was I was just looking for a car and in Texas, car lots are not open on a Sunday. But if you ever looked at the busiest time of a car lot, it was on a Sunday. It's because mm -hmm. people don't want to be hounded by salespeople. Same thing in a new home. People will engage a salesperson when they want to engage a salesperson, but there's times when they just want to be looky loose and there's times when they just want to explore. Well, allow them to do that. So that's where unassisted entry came from. Another one was uh, Atlas RTX, which was text message based application and follow up for, for salespeople. And we can all think that we have the best salespeople in the entire world and they're all following up like they're supposed to be. But let's be real, they're not. They're not. And this is just a program that's going to follow up. It's a 
chat bot and it says it's a chat bot, people will um, actually tell a chat bot far more than they're going to tell a human because they know they're not going to hurt anybody's feelings. And they would give real life scenarios. And it allowed my sales team to focus on the A and the B prospects rather than worrying about the C's and the D's that my sales team wasn't good enough at uncovering that they were C's and D's and not A's and B's. So now Atlas RTX has just come so far. I mean, they have some, they almost have all of the top 10 national home builders now because that program is just so relevant to the market and they've expanded to the entire customer journey, which is just awesome there as well. And then one of the other things, and because I could literally go on forever about all the cool <laughs> stuff that we got to play, we were so focused on making our website have every single photo you can think of, every single video you can think of, every single model home, spec home, everything was on the site ready to be sent off. It was sent off in 90 second videos because nobody wants to watch a five minute video. Mm -hmm. And our sales team was truly able to be digital way before being digital was cool. And the whole point of that, all that rambling and all that story is put yourself aside a research budget. So when cool things come up, you are ahead of the market. Cause I will tell you when COVID happened and everybody in the world was looking for unassisted entry in a lock, they were struggling. And I had 88 locks in DFW that I had wow. already had on, on, on hand. And, you know, I probably could have sold those for five times the value at the time, you know, but it was just one of those things that we were ahead of the game. So it allowed us to stay ahead of the game. Yeah, that's so cool. You know, if you're not first, you're last. I think you. Uh, well, Talladega sure, Nights. Yeah, right Talladega there. Nights. So yeah. you're uh, taking advantage of that. Well, let's jump into marketing videos. I'm sure we've yeah. got some some listeners that are eager to learn more about that. Before we jump into that, sorry, yeah. I was responding to the chat here, but oh. I do want to go back to what Chris said about the research budget. Yes. So a lot of my builders, when I start with them, they don't have a marketing budget. So I'm going to say, go back one step further. Every year you need to have a marketing, marketing budget. budget. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you, because you need to market in good conditions, in bad conditions, the marketing changes. Mm -hmm. And what you need from the marketing changes, but you always have to be marketing. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to say, I'm going to say for that plug, Kimberly. <laughs> there, there is a, there's a, a favorite saying of mine, because I see a lot of names on here that I recognize from smaller to mid-sized builders. And I will tell you, you have such an advantage over the nationals. You really do. And when I was a small privately held home builder, when I say small, we were, we were 500 units and above, but small for Dallas. Um, we had a saying and it was out national, the local and out local to national. And the thought process on that was, was think bigger than you really are, but maneuver smaller than what the big guys can. So if something comes up, you got to flip a switch and just, just go after it. And if you look at it, John Burns recently put out a report that uh, privately held home builders were actually expanding their community count a heck of a lot faster than what the large nationals were. And it's because they can make quicker decisions. That's no different than on the marketing side too, and the cool technology that we have. And when we talk about video, I mean, there's so many things that you can do that some of the large nationals may struggle to get approval on just because there's a lot more people that have to approve it. Yeah, the smaller, oh, companies, yeah, smaller companies can really turn on a dime where the big ones can't. It's a huge advantage. Well, let's talk about marketing and videos. What are some of the innovative uses at the top of the sales funnel? You know, what have you done with marketing video? Yeah, I mean, the easiest thing to think about with this is when you're thinking top of funnel, right, you're trying to get as many leads in as possible. You have to stop thinking that people are looking at your website as detailed as what you look at your website, right? So every, it's amazing to me how many people, whether it be friends or realtor contacts, where I say, do you have any inventory homes? And I'm like, we have a website, like go to the website, right? Do you have any videos of your model home? I'm like, go to the website. People are lazy. Salespeople are lazy. So you need to have everything that is on your website also available to your sales team to email off quickly. And again, in a 90 second video or less. So when you're thinking top of funnel, take in essence, what's on your website, deconstruct it into smaller pieces and you can craft marketing campaigns all over that. Whether it be a community video, model home video, inventory video, um, interest rate video, HOA video. I mean, you name it. There's so many things that you can do. And one of the things that I absolutely loved about some of the companies that we all admire so much is a person that they're putting on their, on their budget or as part of their staff is a videographer. I mean, if you think about it, if you, if you can go in and you can pay a videographer, somebody that's young, maybe out of school, 45, 50, $55,000, where all they do is follow around and just gather video content and they have it live on your site. 
you know, you look at CBA Chums, you look at Shell, Shell Brothers, you look at all of these people that just do a phenomenal job with the branding of their organization and why people would want to live in one of their homes. They have videographers on staff. So, you know, even if you don't have that in your budget, you can still shoot amazing content with your cell phone or whatever it may be. But in essence, take everything that's on your site, deconstruct it, send it off to your team and make sure that there's a marketing folder they can easily access it, access it. And if somebody says, hey, can you shoot me the model home video? Do you have an inventory video? What does this look like? Don't push them to the website because you are asking them to do something when they are actually asking you to do something for them. So Absolutely. that's the easiest answer to that one. Yeah. And, and even if you can, if you have it on the website, at least to be able to send it to them from the, from the website right there, that one link. So, I mean, most of our salespeople don't even understand the difference in the layers of URLs that we have available. So don't just go to, you know, abchomes.com, yeah. but actually send them to that, that specific link to answer their question. Uh, yeah. But even better if it can be personalized. So yeah. I love that you you got your sales team uh, involved in, in creating those videos. And mm -hmm. there's, there you know, when you personalize a video and send it to somebody and you're doing a walkthrough, even if it's of the model home and you've done it a thousand times, you're talking about their pain points. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's what video allows us to do. And it's just not that difficult. Like you said, you can do it on your iPhone. You can do yeah. it on your, uh, now I'm a Samsung because I think the, Cameras are better. Uh, so, uh, you know, you can do it on, you can do it on, on, on there and, and video editing, basic video editing is not hard. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, you know, if we, we were talking about this before we actually jumped on this and the biggest barrier to entry behind a salesperson or a marketing person doing anything with video is laziness, right? We talked about how excited we were that this market is actually having a little bit of a, a hiccup. Because for those of us that are that believe we are truly amazing at our jobs, we have been waiting for this. We have been bored to death, waiting for something exciting to happen so we can showcase how great our team is. And I have two phenomenal sales managers, absolutely some of the best of the best, and, and nobody's allowed to go snipe them and try to hire them away. But you know, <laughs> I've been telling them from the get-go, it's easy to be great when everybody's great. It's tough to be great when the world's falling apart. But we need to build up our team and our, our mentality to be great when the world is falling apart. It's so funny to me how many leaders in DFW, because I'm connected to so many of them, are panicking right now because traffic is down. Okay, well, let's not worry about the traffic number. Let's start worrying about the conversion number. Is your team ready to sell? And most people are not ready to sell. So it's the same thing when you're looking at content for video. Your team has plenty of time because most of them have been on sales restrictions or allocations or whatever it is. There is time during the day to go shoot a video and edit it and do this all in 10 minutes. There's time for that. And now that the market is gonna get very competitive, there is time for them to really step up and, and be the all-stars that we know they are. I heard a statistic though that it was just fascinating to me that said 70% of on-site salespeople when the market shifts will actually look for something else to do. Wow. 70%. Oh, that's terrifying. Okay, so, but so let's think about this. If 70% of them leave, that means that means they're, I had to like look up to the side because I'm a journalism major, not a math major. <laughs> it's 100 minus 70. Okay. So that leaves 30% of the market of the new home sales industry is still going to be here. But if you think about it, those 30% are the warriors. Those are the people that are ready to kick some, some butt. And so your 30% better be ready to kick some butt too, because all the pretenders are about to go away. It's those that are really good that are about to stick it out because they know that even in the bad times, this is still one hell of an industry to be in. And we're nowhere near a bad time. Right. We just finally have to work to sell a house. Well, and the, the old guard, if you will, you know, the people I, I know I'm, I'm working with a, a large national builder in, in uh, Charlotte. And so most of these people are very seasoned. They've been around for a very long time. They, they are so rusty and they, they haven't really had to adapt to the new changes because the business has just been so good. I mean, it's Charlotte, it's like Dallas, it's like Tampa, you know, it's just good business. So they have not had to adapt. So even the old guard, those who will stay with us, they, those are the ones you, you can't just say, well, because they did it back in 2019, mm -hmm. you know, that, that we've got to allow them to just do what they do. No, yeah. you need to insist that they come along, take them by the hand and, and pull them with you. And they're going to resist because, uh, you know, I'm doing anonymous surveys before and after every training that I'm doing with this group. 
And it's interesting to see their real thought process because they know that they can safely say what they're mm-hmm. thinking and where these challenges are. And, and, you know, they're frustrated. They're frustrated that they can't use their sales skills, but yet learning those new ones and, and what they're going to have to do to thrive in this upcoming market is going to be interesting. Well, you said something that's so awesome there. You said resist. They're resisting, right? And yep. so what I will, anytime I ever implemented any new technology within my sales team, I only picked two to three people to implement that technology for. And I picked the ones that I knew were going to use it. And I picked the ones that I knew had a big mouth. And what I say <laughs> here is that when they had a big mouth and they're using this thing, they're like, hey, Hartley just chose me to do this, this unassisted entry. And holy crap, it's awesome. And then the other sales people are like, wait a second. Why does Ryan get on a sister injury? Why can I have on a sister? Oh, you want it? <laughs> yeah, I would love to try it. And then next thing you know, the whole team is begging you for something that if you as a sales coach, trainer, leader was going to throw on them and say, hey, you now have to use this. You're going to be like, absolutely. So another, another thing I have mm. to use. So if you think about the same with video, right? So it's very tough. Video has been around forever. We've been talking about bomb, bomb videos forever. Video text messages, video emails. Even though it's fact that video emails get opened up 85% more than a regular email, which is less than 7% today, people are still not doing it. It's crazy to me. It's like you'd be driving with your eyes closed. You simply say, hey, if you drive with your eyes open, you're less likely to hit something. You think you open your eyes when you drive, right? Same theory about sending an email or a video text message or whatever it may be. But as a sales coach, leader, trainer, you should also have it in your budget for contests and fun things right? You shouldn't have to go to your owner or your division president and say, hey, I want to run a contest to see who can create the best video email, who can create the best video text message, right? So you should be able to have the will to go into your team and say, hey, you know, we have a sales rally in two weeks and we are going to do a contest here. Whomever can create the best partner video, best solo person video, best video in general, and we're going to all watch them together and vote is going to get $500. The winners, the second place is going to get $400. The third place is going to three, whatever the dollar amount is. Now, Today, salespeople are used to making a lot of money. So make the dollar amount something that they're actually going to go for and make it fun and exciting. Give them a trophy, give them a a wrestling belt, whatever it is, but have something in place that makes it exciting for them. And then what's going to happen because it happened on my own personal teams is half the team is going to do it. And then half the team is not going to do it. Well, the half that did it is going to start shaming the other half that didn't do it. And half that didn't do is like, oh my God, I can't believe I didn't do it. Look how cool this video was. And you start asking questions. Hey, Ryan, was that hard to do? Daryl, was that video hard to do? And they're like, no, man, it took five minutes on my iPhone. Let me show you how to do it. And then the next thing you know, they're teaching each other, which now they have a vested interest in it. And then you have video emails galore, video text messages galore. You have people creating their own YouTube channels galore. And it's just awesome. It's awesome. And it's, and it's self-driven, right? It's not me forcing anything. Right. Well, I love that. And I love the contest aspect of it. I still think... You know, laziness might be part of it, but I think fear of trying something new and failing is part of it. So do you have any tips for if you're just getting started and shooting that first video, you know, kind of what's step one, what's step two? Yeah. Well, you know, what's funny is you generally ask people because you nailed it right there. there. There's that fear of failing. And there's also that fear of, oh, I don't like the way I look. Right. I don't like the way I sound. Okay, get over it. That is actually, <laughs> and that is actually how you sound. Right. I would love to have an awesome beard like Damon Camario, but I don't. I would never <laughs> have an amazing head of hair or whatever or, or not sound as nasally. We all have things about ourselves that we don't like, but we were all created equal uh, or we all created unique. So own your uniqueness. And the other part of that is get over yourself because it's not about you. It's about the customer. The customer could care less what you look like or sound like as long as you are helping them achieve their goal of home ownership. Right. So get over the fact of what you look like and focus more on the fact that you're helping a customer in a way that they want to be helped. And also think about how great it's going to be cashing those extra paychecks. If you don't like the way you look, if you got that much more money, just go get that fixed. Then you're good. good. (laughs) I I think that is the hardest part. And, and, you know, particularly women, but although I know men who have this issue too, because we do the first time you hear yourself recorded, you're like, is that my voice? Do I really sound like that? (laughs) Uh, But, you know, I know that, you know, there are no, I have no makeup Mondays for a reason. So I don't have to be on camera and I allow myself to have, that's my day to get stuff done. And if I, you meeting with me on Monday, I may or may not be on camera because I give (laughs) myself a break on those, on those days. Uh, You know, so there, I don't just wake up and and my face has, you know, has the makeup on and the lighting and, you know, there are things that you can do 
these <laughs> ring lights, these ring lights are absolutely They're amazing. Mm -hmm. So here's yeah. my ring light, you know, and you can totally adjust that. And, and then you don't have the glare on your glasses. You don't, you know, and you've got the right kind of light shining on you. You can make it more natural. You can make it brighter if you need to. You know, there are things that we can do to make yeah. it a bit more palatable for ourselves to see. Our, I'm not into reality photographer, <laughs> photography at all. Anybody who's ever taken a selfie with me knows that. So it's all about the angles, right, peeps? Well, I think every 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 woman will always say it's all about the angles. And you know, one of my closest friends is Ingrid Prince, and she loves to take to, loves to take photos and loves to critique photos. And I always look so dang good in her videos and her photos, but. Like she's an expert and she's she's figured it out, right? So if there's somebody on your team that is really good at this, just ask for help. Because here's the thing that's fascinating. I was on a huddle call this morning. I'm on an accountability group and we, we do this three times a week. And we were talking about intentional help and intentional uh, gratitude towards people. People hate to ask for help, but people love to help other people, right? We get a sense of joy helping other people. So if you have somebody in your team that's just a rock star photo editor or somebody that's awesome at creating content, have them lead the sales meeting, have them lead the group and have them teach Absolutely. everything that's, that's out there. But you know what, just get them to do it and have them be comfortable. If somebody sees success one time, then it's worth it. If you sell one extra home a year, it is worth it. And again, you have to go back to the fact that this is not about you. It's about your customer. Yeah. Well, and each of your team members has their own gift that they bring. And I think as a, as a sign of a true leader, we have to understand what that gift is for that salesperson because sometimes they don't know their own gifts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we, we have to help them to bring that out and by sharing it with others. Yeah. So everybody can bring something to the table, but yeah. they can't all bring the same things to the table. Yeah. You yeah. know, we, I think that's awesome. We have a question uh, in the chat um, from Miranda Mitch. What if you're on a small team and you're the only one figuring this out? Well, the best thing about that is there's stuff you can hit up any of us. Uh, it's amazing how many people hit up all of us on an individual basis. And, hey, what can I do to help? Um, as, as my friend Chad Sanchegrin says, he always says GTS, which is Google that S-H-I-T. So, <laughs> um, yeah. You know, I mean, the, the best thing in the world is there's a YouTube True. video for almost everything. everything. You can learn anything on YouTube. Absolutely. You can learn anything on YouTube. And I mean, it's as, it's as simple as as just going there's and there's apps for everything too so you know obviously you can reach out to any of us but if you just were to simply youtube it or google it you'll you'll find anything you need well i love to follow people in the industry and especially in their instagram and you know we don't have we were talking about tiktok earlier but you know we don't have that many people who've quite made that leap in our industry those that are are hilarious so it is mm -hmm. fun to watch um but you know by watching those things, it's going to give you some inspiration. You go, mm -hmm. okay, how can I apply that? You know, if you're looking at it with the lens of how can I do that mm -hmm. and looking for ideas and inspiration versus just telling yourself, oh, I can't, oh, I'm too shy. Oh, you know, that inner conversation that you have with yourself is really important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100%. Well, and the other question I think that, you know, this, this lens to is, you know, how professional does this video need to be? Can I shoot it on my iPhone? You know, what do you yeah. recommend there? You know, so there's, so there's a lot of different ways to look at this, right? So one of the best things that we have with our team is we, we do our online sales through a call center out of Arizona. And even when I was running it here locally with my, with my last builder, we would do handoff videos. The best video, at least if, if you were to have one video, if you were to have one video and one video only, so the video important. you need to have is a handoff video from your online sales team to your sales team. Mm. And what that video simply is, is when your online salesperson makes an appointment for you and sends you the salesperson, the information of what that appointment is, and they give you a phone number or they give you an email address, or if they give you both, you quickly fire off your video email that introduces you to that prospect. People have such a higher conversion rate when somebody walks through the door, if they recognize the face of the person that they are meeting with than coming in blind. There is a comfort, there is a sense of anxiety that leaves their body knowing that they're gonna recognize the face that comes through the door. Here's the other great thing about that. If your online sales team happens to be centralized in a location and the lead may not be that great, by reaching out to that lead immediately and introducing yourself. If you got any questions before the actual appointment, please let me know. Oftentimes you can either dismiss that lead before wasting either one of your times, or you can reassign that lead to another community that's a better fit for that buyer. 
or you yourself are going to know way more about them um, personally when they walk in the door, right? It's so funny that, I mean, I've been doing this since 2003. I'm one of those weird people that has a countdown calendar for everything. I could literally go on my phone right now and tell you how many days I've been doing this industry. It's like 18,571 days. It's something like that. Um, oh but gosh. what this is, what this, no, it's not that many. Cause that would, that would age me. I'd have to look, but it's, I've been doing this for 18 years, like four months, eight days, something like that. But what I'm going at here is like, when I first got in the industry, I would, people would walk through the door. How did you hear about us? Did you find us on the, you know, websites were just becoming a thing in 2003. And we had to really start at the top today. There is no reason why any of us are starting at the top. Very few people are ever literally driving by and don't know anything about you before they walk through the door. Same thing with your online sales lead that has a video. You already, you can get so much information from them and speed up the process. Because again, as, as traffic gets tighter, we're about having higher conversion, right? Let's not worry about the traffic coming through the door. Let's convert higher numbers and make it a better experience. The number one thing is you do that through an online sales video handoff. Now, if you do have a local online salesperson that was as good as what I had with Ingrid, everybody wanted to see Ingrid, right? She's such a fun person that everybody wanted to say, you know, where's Ingrid, this bubbly, amazing personality. We don't want to work with the salesperson. Then you do a handoff video with your, on, with your local online salesperson and, you'll say, and your salesperson where Ingrid is sending a video and saying, hey, John, I just wanted to let you know you're going to be meeting with Ryan in Wood Creek and uh, Ryan is a phenomenal salesperson. Then Ryan jumps on the video and says, Hey, I'm excited to help you. If you need anything at all, you let me know. Here's my personal cell phone number. And right there, that's the handoff. Ingrid is no longer getting the phone call saying, Hey, are you meeting me out here? Or who's meeting me out here? Because they know they're meeting with Ryan. So one number one video you need to have is you need to have the OSC handoff video. Hands down. I would take that even further and say, for, if you are serious about customer experience, every handoff. So when we hand off to the mortgage company, there should be that video where the salesperson is introducing yeah. the, the lender that they're going to be yes. working with. Yeah. And then same thing with design studio. So who are, who are you sending, who are they going to be meeting with at the design yeah. studio, if that's relevant to your business. And then and when it's time to introduce the, uh, the superintendent, because we're going to have that pre-con meeting, you know, do the same yeah. thing. Yeah. So they have that comfort level. Yeah. Think about your company messaging. Think about the expectations that you want to set so that the buyer comes prepared. We don't want them showing up with their 12 children in tow and grandma and the, and you know, aunt Susie and uncle Tom. And like, we don't need all these people there. Mm -hmm. You can say all of this stuff on video and not have to worry about it. That you'll make sure that it's on brand and on point and it gets said to every single person the right way. Yeah. Well, to Carol's point, I, I recognize that I didn't actually answer your question, Carol. Um, I do <laughs> think that there are several videos that 1000% should be for professionally shot uh, to, to piggyback off what Kimberly said. I think the OSC video should be. I think the introduction to team members should be. But those videos are very generic in the sense that they can live forever as long as that person is there, right? This is our design center. This is our salesperson. This is whatever. All the other videos, I think, and I'm actually going to be a proponent of making them homemade, meaning shooting them on your, your smartphone. Now, in regards to shooting something on a smartphone, you make it personal, right? There is nothing wrong with picking up your phone and holding it like a selfie and say, hey, Kimberly, I just wanted to let you know that I'm thinking about you. I'm walking the community and I noticed that there's an HOA event today. And one of the things that you said that you absolutely want to have in your community is an awesome HOA community for your kids look at how awesome this is right now. And you show, you take your phone, you move it over and you see the 600 kids playing on the playground or the community event that's going on. Flip it back to you. Um, this could be you guys next time. I hope to see you soon. And you fire it off. I mean, you send that as a text message, as, as, a, as a prospective buyer, like, holy crap. Not only did they remember me, they remembered what's important to me and they did it quick and, and immediate. Again, how many salespeople are actually doing that today? None, very few. No, I don't want to say very, none, few. very few, very few, but how easy is that? That's just, that right there is called self-awareness. That's all that is, is if you are trying to have a really great sales team today, you need to have a very self-aware sales team. You need to have a team that's paying attention to their prospects and so what, what's important to them. Well, and you know, I'm always going to throw the realtors in there. So if you want better realtors, you got to educate those realtors. So yeah. you can do the very same thing with the questions the realtors are asking you when they're calling to schedule that appointment, 
Yeah. You know, go out, shoot that video, show them so they remember, mm -hmm. and then they become a support for you instead yeah. of a hindrance for you as part of the yeah. sales process. Well, and you know, as, as we're, as we're talking about this too, and we're talking about customer experience, let's, let's kind of back up what we're thinking of, of content ideas, right? As a marketing team, you should have a list of ideas for your salespeople on video content to shoot because the salespeople say, well, we don't really know what we should shoot, right? Well, we already know we should do handoff videos for everything, right? That's easy. But what is the biggest thing that's hitting all of us today? It's the rising interest rates. How sure. many people on your team have sent a video whether it's another video link from YouTube saying that, you know, hey, don't panic about the interest rates that, you know, this is still historically low, whatever it may be, or just your own video saying, hey, just wanted to let you know that, yes, we are well aware that interest rates are rising, but I want you to know that you can't focus only on the interest rate. You're not buying an interest rate. You're buying a better life, right? And let's focus on this. Let's stop worrying about it. Let's break it down and even, and even talk about it. Let's break it down the insignificant. Yes, the interest rate is a half a point higher than when you bought. That's a cup of coffee a day. Are you gonna stop, a, is a cup of coffee a day gonna stop you from buying this house? You know, bring this out, bring the fears out. And that's one thing that salespeople in general have such a concern about is delivering bad news or talking about bad information. If you talk about it, then it's no longer bad because you're bringing it up to the forefront. Bring it up and say, hey, we know that interest rates are rising. We're aware of this. One thing that you and I should talk about is how to restructure your incentive to lock your interest rate today, even though you're 240 days out, or let's look at buying down your interest rate to where it didn't make a difference that you missed out on this interest rate. I mean, why are we not? Uh, did I just hear you use the incentive word? Right. Are, well, are we to incentives? <laughs> you're still, well, if you are, if you are with the builder that has your own lender, you probably have incentives anyway, because True, we always to tie have them to, have to that. You have you, to have you use our, uh, our lender, but rather than just thinking that we use it towards closing costs, let's talk about using it towards a rate. Let's talk about the people's fears and video is the best way to do that because video is personal. You can hear people's okay. tone. You can hear people's excitement, their fears, their concerns, or if I was to shoot you a text and say, Hey, Kimberly, I know you're concerned <laughs> about the interest rates today. I just wanted you to know, I mean, you're going to be that's like, how it's read. Yeah. What the hell is this? You so know. true. So yeah. do texting every, do and, and email are so flat. I mean, imagine that you can put that inflection in there. You can get that excitement and that energy in there and, and you can help people solve their problems. Yeah. So yeah. And just because interest rates are going up does not mean we can't get creative with the types of mortgages and that's already happening. Yeah. So three, two, one buy downs, boy, those things are coming back. I see them. <laughs> I see it coming. I uh, my first know, seven three, two, one buy down. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, make sure you're educating yourself on, on those things. Um, as salespeople, how do we keep the, the salespeople from getting stagnant and stale with these videos? So what do you do ongoing to keep your sales team and your OSCs creating the videos and, and making sure that the messaging is on point for those? Yeah, well, I think that goes back to, and I'm a huge fan of the contest, right? So mm -hmm. why not, if you have a holiday coming up, you do a holiday theme video. Maybe you do a superhero theme video. Maybe you do a costume theme video. Again, make these Wait, fun. quick aside. Chris likes to dress up as superheroes for his sales meetings. So. I love a good <laughs> costume, and I own way more onesies than any adult male should. Um, that is, that is <laughs> um, But, you know, you, you can't be, and this is, this is such a great point, and, and as I'm thinking about this, we think what we do daily is monotonous, right? We think shooting an interest rate video is monotonous. We think shooting a welcome to your community video is monotonous. But the person that's buying the house for the first time or the person that's looking at your community for the first time, this is not monotonous, right? So again- No, it's, it's for, just for them. Yeah, It's exciting for them. It's for, it's for the customer. Get over yourself yeah. as the customer. But, you know, as a marketing team, create, you know, hey, these are the top 10 video ideas that we have for the month. Let's talk about interest rates. Let's talk about the fact that there is a uh, festival in your hometown coming up or there's the state fair or things that you can just shoot to, to remind people that you are here and you're thinking about them because we are going to have to start working for sales again. And right. there's no better way to do it than, than fun and creative videos to, to do it. But yeah, it should fall back on your marketing team some to say, hey, maybe this is the top 10 videos of the month that you should focus on. Well, talk a little bit about the marketing team's role as it relates to branding and messaging. You know, how does that play in? I imagine that, you know, the bigger the company is, the more they want to control what the salesperson's saying. Yeah, well, that's such a great point. And, you know, one of the cool things about Kahov Manian is that they actually do something that's called selling on social. And so they actually encourage it. 
but they obviously watch it, right? We don't want any, we don't want anybody running Vogue or Rogue, not Vogue, running Rogue and shooting videos without their pants on, right? Like we don't want to <laughs> get us sued by any means, right? It's sad we that we have to point that out, but. Yeah, I mean, we have, we could probably all say, and if you haven't seen the TikTok of the guy who was talking about how, how you're not going to get to buy a house in today's market. I mean, if you guys haven't seen this, shoot, reach out to me and I'll forward it to you because we're pretty damn funny uh, and very realistic, but none of us would have wanted our company logo on this guy's TikTok video. And he was smart enough to put a, a name, a fake name tag over his. Oh, how shirt, funny. Which, yeah. was, which was good. But to that point, you do have to set some guidelines and boundaries for your team, right? Now, I will say any team I have been on, whether it, whether it's been a public builder or a private builder, we have not allowed them to create their own Facebook pages for the neighborhood, right? We want to be able to drive that to the to the marketing side for that so we can Absolutely. engage the content and be cautious of it. Um, just some general do's and don'ts. Most of it's common sense. If you don't have people on your team that can understand common sense, you probably shouldn't have them on your team to begin with. But, you know, obviously <laughs> we shouldn't be using cuss words on our on our videos. We shouldn't be saying things that are inappropriate on our videos. We still need to be very much keep it professional. You can still have fun and be professional. Now, I'm probably one of the most unprofessional people out there, and I still work for a large national and builder, so I can still play within my guidelines. So if I can do it, anybody can do it. Just play within the rules. But yes, you do need to have people that are watching your videos and watching your content to make sure that you're not saying or doing something stupid that's going to get you fired or sued or or whatever it may be. Yeah, and, and certainly we want to make sure that we avoid um, topics that could be polarizing. And these days that list is getting longer and longer because everybody's <laughs> either, you know, the camp, th this camp or that camp, and there's yeah. no in between. So, you know, we have to, we have to be cautious of those things. And it's always good to have that run if it's going to be a marketing type video, particularly that it goes out and, and somebody else has a set of eyes on it. If you're going to use humor, just get somebody else to take a look at it just to make sure. We'll make sure that they think you're funny. <laughs> that it's and not funny. insulting. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a fine line sometimes. Yes, it is. So yeah. Yes, it, it definitely can be sarcasm too. I think, you know, we have to, and I'm queen of, of sarcasm, but you know, there's a limit to what you can do with that sarcasm that, and especially if you're going to try to type it in one form or another, because it's not going to come through. Right. Yeah. So pe people definitely need to be careful. Let's talk about it. Damon brings up a good point. He said, you haven't lived until you've had one of your videos shown at NAHB on what not to do. <laughs> so what do you do if you get that person who maybe crosses a line or you would re redirect them and, and, and encourage them to do something a little differently? How do you handle that, Chris? Yeah. I mean, you know, that's one of those things that unfortunately when content is put out there, it's out there forever. You know, it's, it's one of those things that you have to remember um, and I will never forget, this was when I first started at Pulte Homes in 2003, Bill Pulte once said, never do anything that you would have a shame to be on the front of the Wall Street Journal, right? So just know that anything that you put out there does have the opportunity to be out there for life. So make sure that you are watching that. It would not be a bad idea to have a close friend, uh, significant other spouse, whatever it may be, watch your video and just say, hey, what do you think about this? Is this coming off the way that I intended it to? Just like when we all get an upset customer that reaches out to us and then we fire back real quick and sometimes right. they say, let's take a break and walk away and then relook at this and say, hey, is this accomplishing what I wanted it to accomplish? And if you do happen to put out content that is offensive, it's okay to go back and apologize and own up for it. That's the best thing to do is to say, hey, I recognize that I put something out. It, was, it came across in a way that I did not intend it to be and I want to apologize for that. This is right. the message I was trying to get out there. Most people will forgive. Most people will. Um, but I do remember yes. James telling that story, which is which is pretty funny. But <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, well, and uh, you know, we probably all had those moments, Damon. So the fact that you were out there and you were trying to me is, you know, I, I used to love to see your videos. I don't remember seeing them. So hopefully, we didn't discourage you from from putting out videos these days. So uh, get those back out there. That beard is righteous and people should see it. Yep. That's for sure. <laughs> well, and if anyone needs a great example of an apology that, you know, is perfectly PR'd, then just go look at Will Smith's. <laughs> yeah. You talk about big faux pas, but yeah. handled pretty well. I mean, I'm sure he had a PR team, you know, coaching him, but 
if you, you need help with an apology there, you know, you'd ask Kimberly, actually, I think Kimberly's like, did you read that? It was really re- well written. And it was. So yeah. if you, if you need help with an apology, there's your role model. Yeah. <laughs> I think I sent that to you, whether you agree with it or not, look, uh, look how yeah. well-crafted this PR was. Very <laughs> well-crafted. Exactly. So yeah, PR, PR matters. I think that's your point, right? Yeah. PR, PR matters. Well, I'll tell you what, I mean, Chris Hartley's a great PR example here. I mean, I've seen her, it's like, it's like he's hit several, like he's really a PR person, but he's a sales trainer. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. Yeah. Well, I've made many mistakes in a lot of areas. So, uh, I mean, I'm the first to fess up to him for sure. <laughs> Well, anybody who speaks in public at some point, you are going to screw up, hopefully not on the level that Will Smith did, but uh, you're going to screw, you're going to say something somewhere that somebody takes offense to. So even if you uh, didn't mean to, even if you did, absolutely. Yeah. And you know what? Not everybody's going to agree with you all the time. And that's a hard one. That's a tough, that's, I just think I'm amazing and everybody should just agree with me, but apparently the rest of the world doesn't (laughs) see it that way. So let's talk about that customer experience. We've touched on it and, you know, we've talked about doing those handoff videos, but let, you and I are, we're customer experience geeks. So that's, that's, you know, to me, what our industry should be yeah. focusing on. Yeah. And I think we've taken some leaps forward with that mm-hmm. and we're definitely not where we need to be, but we're making some progress. So yeah. how can, what's important to lay the foundation before you start making the videos, what do you yep. think? Yeah, um, one, we need to we need to recognize the fact that the customer journey and the customer experience is the most important thing today to focus on. It is, you know, I believe it may have been you and I. We did a webinar one time where we talked about reputational risks and that there was a lot of decisions being made from the top that were putting people in a negative light, and we almost forgot about the customer in, in general. We were so. Um, concern with raising our prices or canceling people because prices were being raised or whatever it was, where we almost forgot about the customer for a while. And we had the conversation where we said, at some point, the customer is going to be the only thing that matters again. And there's going to be some of those companies that won't recover from some of the bad decisions that they did. Well, when we're talking about the customer journey today, and we are seeing rising interest rates, we're seeing homes cost more than ever. We're seeing building times take longer than ever. And our buyers are pissed that it's taking two more months and in two months their interest rate went from three and a half to five percent and now that that house that was affordable that they were already paying too much for is now way too much for them we need to go back and use the customer journey and the customer experience and use video and use our relationships to go back and protect the backlog i will never forget when this pandemic happened in uh march of 2020 Elena Money Garmin and I got on a call and we were like, how are we going to protect the people that have already bought a home from us from canceling? And I say, we need to shoot video content reminding them why they bought to begin with, right? So if you have a backlog and a lot of salespeople have a backlog of 30, 40 buyers right Mm -hmm. now, the best way to get paid is to make sure the people you've already sold a home to are going to close on their home. So you may have to go back and sell twice, but go back to them and reassure them that that you understand their concerns, you understand their frustrations, their fears, and that this is something we're going to get through together and we can get through it together. But let's refocus on why you bought this house, this community, this town, the city, the state to begin with. Let's refocus that, right? So I think that would be step number one. The second step there is when we're talking about that customer journey and we're creating content and video around it, we need to have the entire team refocused around why this buyer should buy with us. Get your construction team bought in, get your design team bought in, get your mortgage team bought into being appreciative of the people that are buying a home from you. Thank our buyers again. How many, how many times, and this is, oh, I love this. I love this. I listened to a podcast the other, the other day. It's called the double thank you. When you go to Starbucks and you pay them $6 for a cup of coffee, what do you say when you hand over your money and you get your coffee? You thank say you. thank you. And what does Starbucks say when they take your money? They say thank you. Are our buyers loving us enough today where we are giving a double thank you? I don't think most builders are. I don't think most builders are getting a double thank you right now. I think some people, and we're seeing it. We may not be getting a single thank you because we're not (laughs) saying thank you. Yes. I mean, look at our, look at our surveys right now. I mean, we are seeing our surveys blasted across the country right now because people are frustrated and they're frustrated with lack of communications. Number one complaint lack of communication, lack of communication. No, and, and historically it's always been lack of communication. It's worse right now because we're keeping buyers in the pipeline and in the process longer 
than we ever have historically, particularly for our production builders. But we all talk about what's going on in the market. So why aren't we sharing it with our buyers? Why aren't we expressing this with them? And it goes back to laziness oftentimes. So own up, be the difference, right? My, one of my favorite sayings of all time is be the difference that is the difference. Okay, mm -hmm. step up, be that salesperson that keeps a 0% cancellation rate while interest rates go from three to 5% or possibly 6% because you instilled in your buyers the trust of why they bought with you from the beginning. You and your construction team were very upfront and honest and you're getting on a video text message together and say, hey, you know, I just wanted to let you know that unfortunately we got a red tag for this and we're going to handle it. We've already called it in, but we just wanted to let you know first from us that we're on top of it and we're excited to get you in and we're looking forward to moving forward. And, you know, you're and just a red tag is not a bad thing. Stop assigning thing. whether something's good or bad. A red tag means the system's working. Yeah. We missed something. It's one of these sets of hands that works out in the elements, missed yes. something and the inspector caught it. We're going to fix it for you. Yep. It's not but, bad. It, it's good. But Kimberly, you nailed it earlier when you said we should have video about the, uh, you have a pre-construction meeting coming up. You have a design center coming up. You have a pre-drywall, you have a walkthrough, you have a closing. Here's what's going to happen at title. There are so many, I mean, I could give you 25 different videos you can do today that should just be in your arsenal that you can just fire off fire out. and yep. just do, right? And you have them living on your desktop and they just send, and they, they're living in your phone where you can text message them to the realtor. Nobody is doing that today. Well, be a difference. You know, it's interesting. We've had um, a lot of builders come to us, you know, talking about their backlog, worried about their backlog, you know, how do we keep them interested? How do we keep them engaged? And we're starting now to build auto drip email campaigns that go out to that backlog to give them, you know, updates and information. And, you know, so, you know, building those and whether they're set up in an official drip campaign or whether they use them as that timing is appropriate, you know, you could work videos into that. It, it makes so much sense. Yeah. People would much rather because walk they're all stuck and waiting, something. you know, wondering what's going to happen with their house. Is it going to close? Mm hmm. Hundred percent. Yeah. We people love to be entertained, so entertain them, right? Make this entertaining. Make the whole video entertaining. And, and short. And and then, as a salesperson, you know, I always walked my homes every mm -hmm. week. First of all, I never wanted any surprises. But then I could update my buyers and I could explain to them what was happening in, in the process. And this was before we all were walking around because, I, you know, I'm that old, but we were all <laughs> walking around with one of these. Right. So we, now that we have the cell phone, there's just no excuse. You've always right. got a video camera with you. You know, just do that walkthrough. And if you see something that isn't quite right, just say, you know what? I noticed this. Wanted to let you know I've already discussed it with uh, Builder Sally and she's going to be taking care of that. Yeah. So, you know, you, you can let them know that you're looking out for them. Yeah. Our mm -hmm. salespeople get really caught up because they get, they start to assign good or bad to news and they don't yes. want to be the person who delivers bad news. Oh, it's going to take longer. Well, yeah. if we'd been setting these expectations all along, that shouldn't be newsworthy. It's right. here's where we are in the process of your home. We don't know how long it's going to take because we don't know how long it's going to take to get windows or garage doors or whatever it is. Yeah. Well, I know, I know we're getting close to time. So there are, there are, there's something that I wrote down that I wanted to share with. with is this your here. six it, tips and tricks? It was, it was my six. I was tips hoping you get to those. Yeah, so as I'm watching, as I'm walking the clock, cause you know, the three of us could talk forever literally right. on any topic. <laughs> um, but the, the first thing I want to talk about is one, remove the distractions. When you're doing video, remove the distractions. And Kimberly asked me, she goes, are you shooting your video today in your little girl's playroom? I absolutely am, but I have other locations that I shoot video. And, and I told her, I said, well, I didn't shoot this at my corporate office because we have such a fun culture that it is not uncommon for them to bust into my office at any given time <laughs> and try to shoot a firecracker off in my face or do something to me that's going to have me look a little silly, right? So know where you're at to have the best possible video or engagement that you can. So that's one, remove the distraction. Number two, I put no virtual backgrounds. Now there is a time and a place for virtual backgrounds, but I do not oh, believe yeah. it's when you're engaging with a customer. I think it's fun if you're doing like maybe a company uh, Zoom call or whatever, but let's, let's get rid of those because they're distracting and you, know, you move around and they can look a little funky. So just get rid of the virtual background. The third thing is engage the camera. We know where the camera is, where the, where the lens is on all of our devices. If you're shooting a video, you know where you should be looking. If you're on your, on your laptop, you should know where you're looking. 
engage the camera because I was on a call recently where literally the person on the other side was doing this the entire time they were talking. And I was like, what in the hell is he looking at? Like, I was so concerned and, and, and curious what he was looking at more so than what he was saying. Right. Maybe it so, was a spider. Maybe, maybe it was. But see, that maybe it was. But the whole time he was talking, <laughs> he was to say, but I'm like, where in the world is he looking? Uh, my, my first thought was, oh, there's a camera there and he's watching somebody come through his office or whatever it was. Right. But it had me more focused on what he was paying attention to rather than the message he was delivering. Um, the fourth one there is dress for success. Now, as long if, if you're not going to stand up, I don't really care what you have on underneath, but if you're going to stand up and somebody's going to see your full body, make sure you're dressed professionally with your full body, right? Make sure that you're dressing for the part and that you don't look like it. And, and I always have to say, make sure you're dressed because yeah. I have done <laughs> training sessions where somebody would stand up or I, I had a lady wrapped in a blanket one time and uh, the blanket kept falling down and you could clearly see there wasn't much going on underneath that blanket. Wow. I'm going to refrain from saying anything. We're refrain from saying anything. Yeah. <laughs> um, the fifth thing is watch your cadence of your delivery. My sister and I, when we're together, I have an amazing sister. She's a year and a half younger who's in the industry. And when we are together and we talk, we talk so fast that nobody can understand what the heck we're saying. When you're speaking to somebody on an audience, make sure that you're speaking mm -hmm. clearly and that they can understand what you're saying. Yes, we all get excited about what we want to talk about, but make sure that they can understand what you're talking about. And the very last thing I want to say, because we are getting really, really close is do not let your audience get bored. If you are boring them to death, they are not going to pay attention to anything you have to say, no matter how relevant the topic is that you are talking about. So have fun with the video, enjoy it. Um, and just be the difference. That's the difference because most people are not going the extra mile to put themselves apart from the competition. And it is so dang easy to do. You don't have to be that much better. You really don't. No. That's the sad part. Just that one degree will no. really make a, a world of difference. Suck what about, uh, what about our audience here, guys, questions Any? that you have yeah. before we, before we wrap for the day or comments or I don't think anybody got bored because we certainly still have uh, quite a few people on here. So good to see you too, Damon. We appreciate that. We appreciate you being here. Uh, we had a ton of people who registered for this. So I know that they are, uh, a lot of people are going to be watching this in video. So uh, thank you, Bill. Um, any questions from anybody? No, we're just getting lots of kudos great to, and great well, stuff Thank here. you. Well, yeah, well, we it's good to everybody taking the time. Yeah. Good to have some, you know, all this great feedback on hump day of all days, you know, <laughs> middle of the week, help us get through the end of it. Yeah, exactly. So, well, thanks for joining the power hour. We are um, next we're, we're June before we're we June? get back together. Yes. So I will send all of that information out to everybody. So you'll have so it. But see yeah, you guys in June. Thanks for your time today. Thanks, thanks Chris. Thank you so much. You're Thank you guys. You're awesome as always. Right. <laughs> Bye. Bye guys. Bye.